Okay, so we go on with the next talk of this morning. Uh, Yan Yan Li will continue his lectures on second order conformal invariant elliptic equations. Please. So uh, we have this uh, equation, the equation, so let's record the, uh, oh, I didn't write that. So, so, the, so this is the, uh, yeah, there's a function defined on gamma, and this is the conformally invariant operator. And uh, so this is the estimate. Well, uh, if we take the gamma equal to the half plane. So this is for the Yamabe equation. Then in that case, this equation is this equation. This is the standard equation. It, it's written like this. So that is this equation. So then we, this states, uh, if we have this, then we have that. So, <clears throat> And last time, uh, we proved the first step. So we first assume that not only there is an upper bound, we also have a lower bound. So in that case, one can prove the gradient log has a bound, and it also depends on the lower uh, bound. So step two, so we can prove a holder by using this, by using this result and plus, plus the Liouville for the degenerate equation. So we can prove that let's take a take a ball, then we can prove a bound like this. So, so this is the holder norm uh, in a smaller ball. I didn't write as B one, but I just write uh, B one A. It's about the same. So, so this by definition is the soup. This is the usual definition. So, so we, we will prove a holder holder bound. 
So we define also uh, this is a usual definition. If we have a function, so we define in a radius this holder norm, holder quantity. And uh, for x less than 1, so we have a ball, 0, 1, x will be here. So we define a quantity, let's just, so this is for x. Well, if this, if this quantity is small, we don't, we don't really care what it is. So we, so let's call it infinity. So what we care is if that quantity is bigger than one. We want to, uh, if this holder norm is large, we want to measure, uh, give a measurement like one over that. So, so we will take one minus x multiplied by that. So this, this, this quantity somehow uh, is like a, a this quantity is like V x alpha inverse uh, is like uh, like gradient V of x. So it, this is for alpha less than one. So so somehow for alpha equal to one, it, it plays a role like that. So when you rescale, the holder analog of that. So then we prove this by contradiction. So suppose this is not true. Suppose holder is not true. So then so Namely, so if not, if not, so if we do not have a holder control, then we know that, then that means for a sequence of solutions which, which has an upper bound, which has an upper bound, and satisfies the equation. However, this thing will go to infinity, the holder. So that translates to the infimum of this will go to infinity. Because, uh, yeah, this is the definition. So this will be going to infinity. So let's take a ball, zero, say, ball of three quarter. So we know somewhere here, when this is one ace, when x in here, so this inf will go to zero. 
So we can so we can pick up a sequence. Well, we can take a maximum, actually. So uh, we can just take a maximum point. So this is equal to one. Take a maximum. Maximum will not be on the boundary, because on boundary is zero, so maximum will be inside. So. When x is inside one ace, so the maximum of this will go to infinity because the inf will go to zero. So, so this quantity will go to infinity. And uh, so, so x will be here, xi. So let's draw a ball of half the distance to the boundary. Let's call it sigma i. So let's say sigma i is half the distance to the boundary. So it may go to zero. It may go to zero. And let epsilon i is just log ui x, i, and alpha. Let's take this. So we know that sigma i over epsilon i will go to infinity because because of this. So this will go to this will go to infinity because this quantity were bigger than the quantity restricted to B one eighth. When restricting there, this will have a positive lower bound. The inf goes to zero, so the soup will go to infinity. So this goes to infinity. So this is twice of sigma i over epsilon i. So epsilon i over that will go to infinity. And we also know that epsilon i goes to zero because of this. This is epsilon i. Uh, be, be, uh, because of this. So, uh, so if we restrict to, so left hand side is twice of sigma i divided by epsilon i. Right hand side is bigger than one half. And then I restrict this to the supremum of that ball. I can go to the supremum of that ball, I can bigger than, let me see, uh, this is bigger than, I want this to go to, what do I want? I want This, oh, th uh, sure. This goes to, goes to. So this this is epsilon i. So this is small. So certainly this goes goes to, goes to the arrow. So that's very clear. So next, I want to say that uh, epsilon i will also be less than four log u i z alpha for every alpha. 
in that, that ball. So when, when z is in here, so left hand side is twice sigma i divided by epsilon i. So this is bigger than, so soup, I can take any z in that ball. So, but when I take, when I restrict z in that ball, then, then the distance to the boundary, which is here, will be bigger than sigma i. So it will be bigger than sigma i. So sigma i and sigma i cancels, epsilon will be less than four times that. So this is less than four times this. So then, uh, so then we can rescale So vi of y equal to 1 over ui xi. So we enlarge this ball. So this little ball. So this little ball at the center is the maximum, almost a maximum. It's not exactly a maximum, but it's like a maximum. And uh, this ball I enlarge, so I will, I will get this. I will have that. So this is enlarged to a ball of this size, bigger and bigger. And uh, we know that log vi at zero is equal to zero, because this is how we make it. So we look at uh, log vi. So this is vi is there. At the center, we choose to be the same value. And then we also know that if we do vi, we do alpha 1, 0, it is actually equal to 1. It is scaled uh, log. This epsilon i is exactly scaled like this is equal to 1. So this quantity is chosen that way. So, so it's equal to 1. And uh, also, for every beta bigger than one, for y less than beta, so the, this log vi, log vi, alpha one, this quantity is less than uh, four. So this is chosen because, because this quantity is, is less than, uh, this quantity is bigger than one quarter, a translate will be like that. So we selected, so instead of selecting the gradient uh, is the maximum, we select this holder quantity to be the maximum. So it translates to this. So then this will say that the vi will be bounded above from below by a positive constant. Because log vi is zero at one point, and on every unit ball, its holder control is less than constant. So when you go finite distance, so it's upper and lower bounded by a constant. So, so translate to vi, certainly it means this. So then, <coughs> this fall into uh, the case that we have upper and lower positive bounds for vi. So we also want to look at the equation satisfied by vi. Well, the scaling goes the right way. 
this scaling goes the right way. This scaling goes the right way, and the equation satisfied will be So this vi can be written as 1 over uh, ui xi and epsilon i n minus 2 over 2 and multiplied by epsilon i n minus i over 2. So multiply this, multiply by that, it's just like a critical exponent equation. So this is invariance. So this thing should satisfy the same equation. This is invariant. So now this quantity will be bigger than, because ui has a lower bound. It's less than b. So this is bigger than 1 over b epsilon i n minus over 2. This goes to uh, infinity. So then this equation when multiplied by a large constant, so because of the homogeneity, and uh, it will be a, 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 a bi, gamma i. So this gamma i will go to zero. It's a constant. So it's just, this is actually the, this raised to minus uh, four over and minus two power. So this will be a, uh, going to zero. And then our earlier estimates, this, the estimate, first step, we say if something is bounded below and above by a constant and satisfying the equation, actually that proof works exactly the same if this constant is less or equal than one. So, so, so then we will have, in that case, we will have a gradient bound. So that means in any finite range, so the gradient will be bounded. So we know that by step one, so it will say that gradient of vi or log vi is the same, so will be bounded by a constant depending on that. So now we have vi satisfying this equation. So gradient vi is under control and on any compact set, this will be bounded by that. So we know that passing to a subsequence, so uh, we have a vi, there's a vi, it has the following property for any gamma less than one, in particular for gamma bigger than that. So vi will converge to some v. The convergence will be c gamma log of Rn. Because on bounded set, we control the gradient. And the limit function will be in c Zero one. So, and uh, when passed to subsequence, this equation can be passed through by in viscosity sense. So we are going to see uh, f lambda a v actually is equal to zero, namely this a v now belongs to the boundary of the cone. So, so, but in that case, the, we, we know the, uh, the Liouville type theorem. So it says V should be equal to constant. So V should be equal to constant. And uh, well, if V is equal to constant, vi goes to v 
in holder gamma bigger than alpha. But we know that this holder control at zero should be one. So this can be passed to limit to log v because our convergence is higher than alpha. But a constant would not have holder measurement one. It should be holder measurement zero. So that's a contradiction. <coughs> Contradicting. So, so this, this, so therefore, we have proved this uh, gradient estimate. If we assume, uh, uh, we have proved a holder estimate, yeah, under only upper bound. So by using the Liouville theorem. Well. So step three is we complete the proof. So, so now we only under this condition. So we can look at u divided by u of zero now. So let's call it u hat. So u of zero, because we know u of zero is less or equal than b. So therefore, f of lambda a u hat will satisfy this b should be to the minus, I think it's 4, four over n minus 2 power. So this is f of lambda a u. So this is how the constant goes. Ah, I shouldn't be using b. Oh, yeah, yeah, b. So, so now we are, so B, yeah, so is, is equal to U zero, sorry. U zero, this is U zero. So this number is less or equal to B to the, uh, uh, it's equal to, this, this is a positive. Because this is in the denominator, yeah, this is better. So, so this constant is having an upper bound. But when it has an upper bound, we know holder control. So by step two, step, step two says that this holder is under control in, in, in B, B2. So this will give holder control in B2. So holder control in B2 certainly implied Hanak. So U hat will therefore be bounded and above by some constant. So because we are, it has Hanak, so we divide by one point. So it's less than something and bigger than something else in B2. So this is what step two gives. <coughs> Step two gives Hanak. So now this already have both upper and lower bound. Then use step one will give control of log u hat, which is exactly log u. This is model model constant. So this is the same. This log and log, gradient log u hat is the same. <coughs> so that completes the proof of that. So, so this completes the uh, completes the uh, this one. So, 
So one can also, one can then prove from here, from C1 estimate to C2 estimate, using again that Bernstein type arguments. So I will not uh, present that here. <clears throat> That's another use of Bernstein type arguments. <clears throat> So what one wants to obtain here, which, which is not uh, completed uh, yet, <coughs> so is on this manifold, so the equation to look at is to look at an equation, look at a conformal metric. So we change to a new metric, and we want the equation equal to one. So this is the equation we wrote to get this gradient estimate in the, when this metric is Rn, we write F equal to one. So <clears throat> eventually, uh, what we really want is somehow we have such an equation on the manifold and uh, <clears throat> we want to prove that the solutions will be universally bounded. We want to prove this. So if you, we want to prove this. So this C depends on this M and G and depends on this F. So we want to prove an a priori estimate. So whenever we can prove such an a priori estimate, we will be able to produce a solution we will be able to produce a solution. So <clears throat> using uh, our estimates showed like gradient estimates and also the secondary estimates and so on. So using available estimates, we will be able to prove existence if one can prove a priori estimates. <clears throat> so, so this, this, this is open when this F, which is the case elementary symmetric function, for K greater or equal than two or less than n over two. So in this range, it is not known. If k is greater or equal than n over two, it is known. But of course, I should say that this is not conformally equivalent to standard sphere, round sphere. In that case, this estimate is not true because all solutions are classified and uh, <coughs> and the explicit and the conformal diffeomorphism group is non-compact, so it's not true. So actually, the only conf manifold with non-compact conformal diffeomorphism group is standard SN. <coughs> so namely, there is no obvious way to make, make, make U to lose upper bound if it's not SN. So this is not known. So for SN existence is true. It's true. Okay. Existence is true. Just, and all Just solutions are, are completely right. classified. Okay. Right. So but but not no upper bound in that case though. So, so, well, one way of proving existence in the case k greater or equal than three and less than that is to prove an a priori estimate. So this is what uh, we describe some 
estimates now. So, so now, so what one would one, one, what one would say that so if there's a sequence of solution such that the maximum of this sequence of solution goes to infinity, then satisfying the equation, then once one wants to to say something about the sequence, say something about the sequence, and eventually to say this is not possible. So, so one wants to analyze the behavior of this UI. One wants to analyze that, then hoping that with more and more information, uh, one say it's not possible to have such a blow up. So before that, one needs to get, get hold of this UI somehow. So what do we, so, so in this case, in this case, and uh, one, one first question is whether this UI can only have finitely many blow up points on the manifold. So, so uh, to go further, uh, it will be good if one can show that. Uh, otherwise, this behavior of UI uh, is, uh, is very complex, so it's, it's, it's not easy to handle. And also, even after proving, say, one has finitely many blow-up points, one would like to say, focusing on one blow-up point, whether or not it's a standard way of blowing up. It's just like a rescaling of, of a sublift extremal, so whether one can prove that. So proving that will also help uh, further analysis in proving this is not possible. Say. So one wants to analyze this behavior of UI as much uh, as I can for the, uh, to begin with. So, so for example, whether or not the H1 norm of this sequence is bounded, yeah, for instance. <coughs> so, so uh, next, I, I want to provide analysis of such a sequence again uh, on Rn. So, so, I would, so uh, it has not been known uh, how to extend that uh, to the manifold yet, even though efforts are being made for that. So I want to describe uh, the estimates for that uh, in some detail. Uh, for the Euclidean case only. <clears throat> so before uh, giving the proof, so I want to describe the result uh, on Euclidean space, so which, which is known so far. So on Euclidean space, so here, is what is known so far. So, so then we take a sequence. Of, so now we are in Euclidean domain now. So we take this equation in Euclidean domain. So in a ball of radius 2. We take a ball of radius 2, and uh, we have a sequence of equations. So suppose there is a blow up. So soup in unit ball goes to infinity. So then for any epsilon positive, we have the following description of the, of the blow up. So, So solution lives in a ball of radius two. So then, then we know that we will have 
finitely points, so denoted by x1k and x2k, maybe x3k, xmk. So we have a number of points, and they are, uh, the number is, so they are universally bounded away from each other. So they are uh, universally distance away. This capital K depends only on this data. Yeah. So, and, uh, and XIK is a local maximum point. So we can draw a universal radius of four. So here, uh, center is the max. So. so we have a center is a max. And, uh, and all the max are comparable. So the So uh, all the max are comparable, and uh, inside each ball, inside each ball, this UK is, and comparing to a standard function, and the standard function is the Sobolev extremal. So one half, this is less than epsilon u x i k. For any x inside the ball. So this capital U is the standard Sobolev function. So this is the capital U. Capital U is here. This is the Sobolev extremal. It's a fixed function. And that's those, those represent a shift of center. And this is mu is the nitro scaling to this Sobolev function. So it's a standard function there. So we know that this UK in C0 norm, it is being measured like that. And away from this ball, so we have all these balls, and away from this ball, we know the rate, <coughs> this u, k, i of x. So this sentence, so away, outside this little ball, away, they decay as one over the maximum rate, uh, which is exactly the rate of the standard bubble. So, so it's, it's the rate of that. <coughs> so this is an estimate uh, which can be achieved for any sequence of blow-up solutions of this equation. Local, locally, and uh, it is. It would be very good if one can achieve something similar to that, or even uh, at the beginning, even weaker than that, uh, or just extend this to 
remain in manifold. So, uh, so I want to describe uh, a few ingredients in proving this. Well, the first in ingredient is a Liu Will type theorem. And uh, actually, there's an open problem here. So, So it says that if there is a sequence of solutions to this f, so so first first for this equation, if we write this equation. And if we write uh, in the case, this f and gamma is equal to sigma 1, which is the trace, and gamma 1, and this is lambda 1 plus lambda n. So in that case, this equation will be modular uh, harmless constant. It is this equation. Well, I think. I can't even write the constant in. It is exactly this equation. So that equation is, is this equation. So for this equation, it is known that all solutions of that can be written down explicitly. So, so this is a this is the theorem of Louis. <clears throat> and there are later work extending this to the general uh, fully nonlinear conformally invariant situation and solutions are all given by that. And, and that's a Liu Will type theorem. So here for to prove the previously mentioned result, we need a strengthened version of that. So namely we have a sequence of solutions which lives in larger and larger balls and uh, but we know that it goes to a continuous function, and uh, then we would like to uh, classify them as the same. So that is a ingredient in proving that blow up behavior. So, well, of course, if one have such a sequence of solutions living in enlarging balls, and the limit will satisfy the equation in viscosity sense. So if we know how to classify all viscosity solutions, so then this result will, will, will just follow. But uh, right now, somehow we don't know how to prove this thing for even, even take V in C1 alpha, uh, we still don't know how to classify this uh, viscosity solutions. So this equation is elliptic, but not uniformly elliptic.
So until when when sh when should my lecture stops? How many? Five five minutes five seconds. So So we have a solution uh, in larger and larger balls. So we know that this VK will go to V, let's say, serial log of Rn. So we know this V is super harmonic. We know V is super harmonic. So therefore, V will, ha will be bigger than a fundamental solution power. So then, uh, because uh, in the proof we this R k as long as R k goes to infinity, it's it's enough for the proof. So we can shrink this R k uh, appropriately to make v k and the v very very small. So we can we can make it as small as we want comparing to this radius. So in particular, we can insist that this VK has this property. So this can be uh, less or equal. Uh, le less or equal. Because VK on compact set converges uniformly. So I, ca I can make that radius be smaller, but still maintaining going to infinity. So, so th this is, uh, yeah, this is just uh, sh take, take that rate more smaller, yeah. In a fixed ball, certainly this can be achieved. Then passing to a subsequence somehow. You can, one can always achieve something like that. So, so, so then what we will prove is, so we have a ball here. We are going to take this x So we are going to take this x, and uh, we know that for very small ball with radius lambda, take a small ball, and we make a Kelvin transformation. So when we make a Kelvin transformation, this Kelvin transformation is written there, so this one will be less or equal than V in the ball, the complement of the ball. So if lambda positive is a small. So this smallness depends on K depend on k and depend on x. So, so, so we take very, very small ball, we make a Kelvin transformation, we are going to see an order outside. And that's not hard at all. Yeah, that's quite straightforward, so this statement. And uh, then we can enlarge this radius, 
and to the maximum position, and we call it lambda k bar of x. So, so <coughs> we make it lambda k bar of x. So this, so this lambda bar k of x, one can show that it has a lower bound which is independent of k, which is independent of k. And this statement, this statement uses the gradient estimates because this estimate is uniform. So we need this estimate. We have a lower bound which is independent of k and the upper bound by definition, we, we just uh, yeah. so mainly the lower bound will follow from here. So so that part I I did not write, spell out the details. Uh, essentially, it, is, uh, it doesn't really use uh, more, more, much information. Just look at the function and doing carefully, and you will see that. So then, one will, I will, I will quickly say two minutes about uh, this next time I will start from here with more details. So one will then take lim inf of this lambda bar k of x. So you enlarge the sphere okay, to the maximum position. You take the lim inf to see uh, in the limit. And uh, one can prove by maximum principle and Hopf lemma Either this lambda bar is always infinity, or lambda bar of x is always finite. So either or. If this lambda bar of x is infinity, then this v will have a property, just from the definition, that for any ball in the space, the Kelvin transformation will be less or equal than the function itself. That will simply say v is a constant. So, but constant is not a solution. So then lambda bar of x should be less than infinity for all x. And this, and also, this means this process somehow stops, this lambda bar of x, it stops. So one can actually show that at infinity, this v has this property. They all have this property. They, at infinity, this is equal to alpha. And then that means we have arrived at the following situation. We have a superharmonic function in our n, and uh, for every x in our n, there exists a positive number so that the Kelvin transformation is staying below. And uh, at infinity, all this Kelvin transformation takes the same value. So in fact, such a function will have a specific form will actually have a specific form. So this property will give this specific form. Once we have this specific form, it's easy to, yeah, it's basically proved the classification. So I think I will stop today. Yeah.